if you had a massive federal government agency with a gigantic budget and all kinds of, uh, I guess, latitude about where that agency operates, would you expect it to just uh, calmly stay within its lane uh, when, in fact, it never has been fully approved by the United States Congress? And you say, which one is that? Well, that would be the Centers for Disease Control. Uh, And Dr. Joel Zinberg joins me now to talk about this. Director of Public Health and American Well-Being Initiative with the Paragon Institute and a senior fellow at the Competitive Enterprise Institute. Doctor, welcome back. Great being here. Thanks for having me. I I guess you catch me by surprise when you say the CDC has never been fully authorized by the Congress. There's no law or statute on the book saying we created this thing and this is what its job is. That's right. The uh, Unlike other significant agencies, Congress has never authorized the CDC. There's no single enabling statute that defines the agency's goals, powers, and structures. So it was, it was first created back in 1946 as the Communicable Disease Center within the executive branch, and it has since that time expanded within the executive uh, branch without particular, with a few exceptions, without particular congressional authorizations, largely through what are known as appropriations. And, and for your listeners, it just, it, it's basically, Congress exercises its spending powers through a two-step process. They first authorize uh, something, that an authorization measure establishes, modifies, it continues uh, an agency or program, uh, and, and it usually sets out the duties and functions of that agency and program, including its organizational structure and responsibilities. And then appropriation measures uh, are uh, enacted to provide funding. And that first step has, with you know, a lot, with a, a few exceptions within CDC, has not happened. But there's no single measure, and because of that, the agency just grown crazy into all kinds of areas way outside of its uh, what should be its core function, combating communicable diseases. Well, and in fact, one of the things they get into that, that really troubles me is they keep wanting to jump into, into firearms and guns and Second Amendment issues and call it a public health issue. So they're ab- if they're able to define what they are and the Congress hasn't bothered to do it, they're, I guess they're free to do those kinds of initiatives, aren't they? Well, they are, you know, as long as they can get the funding or someone else within, say, for example, uh, the agency, the Department of Health and Human Services is willing to assign that to them or send the funding that Congress provided over their way. So you have a situation where, you know, a CDC is looking at the consequences of the climate crisis. They're ad- addressing uh, racial disparities in public health. They're talking about the social determinants of health. Uh, uh, they're looking at increases in injury and violence prevention, uh, addressing the crisis of sexual and uh, violence and gun violence, all these things. But you know what they're not doing? They're not addressing uh, communicable diseases. Disease. Just a small, a small fraction of their resources are devoted to that. I mean, one, one estimate has that there's no more than 8% of their resources are devoted to communicable diseases. And that showed during the pandemic. They didn't focus on what their primary mission is. So what, what's the way to get a handle on this? And let me assume that now that it's grown the way it has, CDC is now this giant animal uh, organism, and, and any attempt to actually regulate them or constrain them is going to be pushed back hard by both the CDC and all of its various be- both benefactors and benefit uh, those who benefit from it and those who, who are the ones who benefit uh, CDC, they could say, well, no, we don't want you to get in the way of this. We love having this agency that was never fully approved and can do anything it wants. Well, look, we, there's one thing very clear. You, you can't rely on the CDC to reform itself. Bureaucracies mm-hmm. never do. Uh, and 20 years ago, uh, following the agency's disorganized response to the anthrax attacks, it attempted a reorganization that had to be abandoned when many of its senior staff threatened to leave or did leave. Uh, and moreover, the CDC did a, uh, a review of its pandemic performance, a thing called Moving Forward, and they completely misdiagnosed why they did so poorly. They just said its shortcomings were in communications and due to underfunding. 
So well, they're asking for more money. That, you know, that's the typical Washington bureaucratic response. When you reward us with more money. Uh, so what we, I, you know, what we suggest in this new report that uh, was jointly put out by Paragon Health Institute and the Competitive Enterprise Institute is that Congress has to do the hard work of comprehensively authorizing the CDC for the first time and reaffirming its core mission. And it's got to look institute by institute within the CDC and, and, and say which things belong, which things don't belong. You know, things like the Chronic Disease Prevention Center, which is one of the largest ones, which duplicates all sorts of institutes in NIH don't belong there. Environmental issues and violence prevention are in other agencies uh, where they're already being addressed, and they're being addressed, you know, better than the CDC does. So we think it's it's got to be Congress going back and and uh, uh, doing this and and not being derelict uh, as it has been for the last seventy years. So, so Dr. Zinberg, tell me this: Are there any conservatives, or or you know, God bless them if they did it? Are there any liberals out there who say we need to get a handle on what this this thing does and and actually authorize it or not? And, and trim it down to its core mission and then hold it to the mission. Anybody out there advocating for that? Well, unfortunately, few people are. And you know something? We, when we uh, undertook this study, we were surprised by how little of the uh, agency is, is actually authorized. The current figure is about maybe 50%. You know, it varies over time because Congress makes new programs. It lets programs expire. It puts in temporary programs, things like that. But, you know, as, as I said, the bureaucratic imperative is to expand. And if you're on the progressive sphere, uh, you want big agencies. You don't want to lower the, uh, decrease the size of government. You're interested in making it as big as possible and as powerful as possible. Yeah. Uh, and I think, unfortunately, conservatives don't realize that uh, this is the situation with the CDC, that it's grown in this manner, uh, that it's covering everything but its primary mission, that it's duplicating all these things in other agencies and departments. But we hope that this, uh, this report will make them aware and that there will be a groundswell of, of uh, enthusiasm in Congress to do this and, and to refocus the agency. Because, Dr. Zinberg, one of the things I'd be inclined to do, one of the rules I try to apply to every government we talk about, whether it's state, local, or federal, is how much of this stuff that CDC is doing is being done better and probably more efficiently in the private sector. And if the private sector is already doing it, is there any reason to have a government agency that, that duplicates that effort? And, and sometimes there may be a reason for that, but I would expect in most cases, if you could trim that place down by saying, look, this is already being done in the private sector by other people for other reasons. We don't need to pay for it to chop that arm or leg or other limb off this thing. Well, look, you know, the, there's an awful lot they do that is duplicated uh, and, as you suggest, done better in the private sector. But its core mission of, of uh, you know, protecting the country from pandemics, uh, pre, you know, preventing them in the first place, if possible, and then combating them if they begin. That's something that you that actually the federal government has to do. They they are uniquely situated. They control the borders. They can collect data from overseas. Uh, but they're supposed to be. They're part of the original mission is that they're communicating to the states. In fact, their rich some of their original documents talk about them being in service to the states. The idea was. The CDC will be a resource for state and local uh, health uh, departments and health officials. Uh, and, and they failed miserably in doing that yeah, they did. during and the by pandemic. The way, they weren't the ones who shut off the flights from China. That was President Trump. Now, if they got in there about the 10th of January and say, hey, Mr. President, appears there's a pandemic going on in China. Why don't we cut off the flights from China? A couple of weeks would have made a gigantic difference. That's Dr. Joel Zinberg. He's with the uh, uh, Paragon Institute and also the Competitive Enterprise Institute with a brand new report out on the unauthorized CDC.